A new research just came out where they think that they can use gravitational waves to understand the nature of dark matter that exists around black holes. This research was done by three astrophysicists from the University of Amsterdam and what they did is they basically used Einstein's theory of general relativity, implemented it into their new model and came out with interesting results that were published in this paper here. Let's dive into a little bit of the details of this paper and see what they actually did and how can we understand the nature of dark matter. For the longest time, we haven't been able to understand the nature of dark matter. We know that it's there and it does some weird stuff with the motion of galaxies and all the stars within the galaxies. Somehow, when we observe the velocities of these galaxies and everything within it orbiting inside, we notice that there is some discrepancies between the values of what we see and the values what we calculate. And that's how we came to believe that there has to be something invisible, hidden somewhere within the galaxies that controls the velocities of these galaxies and hold them together instead of causing them to fly out. The reason being is that hidden variable that is somewhere within these galaxies that we cannot see has a lot of mass. And this mass, according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, causes the fabric of space-time to bend, creating more gravity. The more mass, the more the gravitational pull is. And since there's a lot of gravity, the galaxies hold together and everything inside the galaxy just stays together intact instead of everything inside flying out. Scientists and astrophysicists came to believe that this matter called dark matter is the reason holding everything within these galaxies. The problem is dark matter makes up about 27% of the entire universe as we only know and understand 5% of the visible universe and the rest being dark energy. Now, the real test for this paper is making some theoretical predictions using Einstein's theory of general relativity to understand how these dark matter hints could look like within the data if they were ever observed. So their study concentrates on systems in the universe called extreme mass ratio in spirals. And these systems are made up of two black holes orbiting each other one of them is a very big black hole and the other one is a tiny one and the tiny one comes orbiting around the big black hole and it kind of falls down towards it where they form a system where they they're held together in this cosmic dance and they keep orbiting each other and they come to study these motion of these two black holes which is one of them is big one of them is tiny and they draw these conclusions from their motion and they say that if there were dark matter to exist around the black holes, I believe so the big one in the middle, these dark matter would influence the motion of the small black hole around the big black hole. And these influences can be seen and detected according to their model. And what their model suggests is that if we implement Einstein's theory of general relativity into the study of these two black holes orbiting each other, then we can draw exact conclusions, exact number that can be calculated and estimated of how these hints of dark matter can be seen. And if these hints were to be seen in the actual data, if we ever come and observe these two black holes dancing around each other with an actual telescope through their gravitational waves, we can understand what type of dark matter, what kind of particles, what kind of material that makes them up, why are they invisible? This is one of the answers that would get questioned. So what, what basically is happening is if these two black holes orbit each other, they would cause the fabric of space-time to vibrate and produce cosmic waves that are called gravitational waves. And gravitational waves for the longest time, ever since they were detected in 2015, have been serving as a new window upon the universe. They have been telling us so much about the objects that produce them. When a gravitational wave passes by the Earth, we know where it came from, what type of black hole 
that produced it, how massive it is, where it is, all these information we can understand. So they basically use these gravitational waves and, and look for these hints of dark matter. For now, this paper is only a theoretical model that makes predictions. And you're probably wondering, what's the use of making theoretical predictions if there are no observational evidence that tells us what dark matter is? Well, lucky for you, there is something really cool that I've been reading about lately, which relates to my research a little bit. And it's something called LISA Space Antenna. LISA Space Antenna is uh, destined to launch in 2035 from the European Space Agency. And this is an observatory that its only main task is to observe gravitational waves in space. So it would have a more accurate sensor that is more that would be able to detect very fine gravitational waves and this telescope would be able to detect these hints of dark matter so the reason these researchers are making these estimates and predictions beforehand is to put out these numbers out there and say this how the numbers should look like this is the exact uh, digits that these hints should be coming in and if this telescope ever detects the same numbers, voila, we understand what dark matter is. We have the result, we have the answer. And this uh, hints that they said, uh, what they called it in the paper, uh, dark matter spikes or mounds. And these spikes would have some sort of influences within the gravitational waves. They would influence the gravitational waves, it would make it look different than it is. Um, and that usually can, can be separated from, if we have a theoretical prediction, if we have the equation that describes a gravitational wave coming from a small black hole and a big black hole, and then we observe this gravitational wave exactly from that system, and it would look a little bit different it would have a little of a spike. This spike is dark matter itself. And this is basically how we do science. We make predictions before we make observations. And we have our accurate answers beforehand because the equations before that we used to build this model have already made incredible predictions that are so accurate. So it makes sense for us to use these equations and draw some conclusions for future observations. And then when we observe them and the numbers come in to be exact, we have made a discovery. And this is a very fascinating research and, and they have a very good model because this is the first model that came out making these numbers uh, and the estimates that relies heavily on Einstein's theory of general relativity. All the previous models were using Newtonian approximations that weren't really accurate, especially in understanding dark matter. So I'm looking forward to the future of this research to see what's it all about. And I have a strong belief that gravitational waves hold the secret to our universe. And I wouldn't be surprised if we come to understand the nature of dark matter through gravitational waves themselves. See you later.